we're hearing more and more about Lennox-Gastaut syndrome and Dravet De syndrome, uh, which are two of the epileptic encephalopathies. Uh, both of these disorders are childhood seizure disorders that have very difficult to control epilepsy and who we think that if we're able to control the seizures sooner, we're able to protect neurologic development more and the outcome in terms of cognitive and physical development will be better if we're able to make the proper diagnosis, get the proper treatment and stop or control the seizures as soon as possible. I'm not a pediatric neurologist, I'm an adult neurologist. So that job is for the most part carried out by the pediatric neurologist or who are seeing them in this age dependent expression of these various syndromes. Uh, the tools that they have to use include the MRI scan, EEG recording, physical exam, and, but also more and more the epilepsy panels. I mean, there are now epilepsy gene panels that are routinely used in the clinic in pediatric neurology that are very helpful in identifying the specific cause of a disorder such as Dravet's or maybe one of many uh, contributing causes to a disorder like Selenic Gesto. Many times there are issues with administration of medicine, getting the medicine in the patient. Obviously, there's the reluctant or difficult teenager or whatever that's pushing back against the control of the adult world, but there also are the intellectually disabled or physically disabled patients that either don't understand that they're supposed to swallow or have difficulty swallowing. And as such, other formulations uh, are very important to be able to adequately administer the medicines um, to these individuals. The administration of medicine to someone who can't readily swallow pills frequently is very challenging. Um, you obviously can crush many of the pills uh, and administer them you know, through food or applesauce or whatever, sometimes through a gastrostomy tube if necessary. Um, but it's certainly advantageous to have the oral preparation where you can more accurately measure and assure adequate uh, administration of the medicine. In addition, I mean, there's some other routes of administration. One is the orally disintegrating tablet, which kind of melts in your mouth and allows even someone with dysphagia and difficulty swallowing to take the medicine uh, effectively and easily. More recently, there's the development of a film uh, where, uh, in this case, it's the new preparation for clobazam, uh, but it's a film that I guess many of us Think about like the Listerine melt in your mouth films that we had that were available uh, for bad breath or whatever. Uh, this is very similar. It has the advantage that once it sticks to the mucous membrane uh, of the cheek or whatever, it dissolves, and even a, a difficult patient can't spit it out or reject it. Uh, so it's really an interesting technology that is going to be extended to other products as well. And the most interesting one is diazepam. So the same company is developing diazepam administered via this film or, uh, that's placed in the mucosal mucosa in the mouth and trying to get it approved for the treatment of epilepsy, acute repetitive seizures uh, in, in, a, in a fashion similar to how we use diastat or rectal valium. And certainly the administration of film to one's cheek is a heck of a lot more attractive than the rectal administration and would extend the use of under this rescue medicine to a much larger population of patients, particularly in the adult uh, population. With the new film technology to administer medicines, uh, it'll be an interesting question as to like what patients may benefit from its use. Um, I've prescribed it a few times so far. I don't really have enough clinical experience to make a judgment to how it's gonna work, uh, but clearly it's, it's very nice to have an easily administered medicine that uh, really cannot be rejected by the patient. I mean, outside of getting your finger bit or something, you know, once you can get it in their mouth, it's going to be absorbed, it's going to be swallowed, uh, and it's going to get into the individual. Another product that's being developed for the treatment of Dravet syndrome is flinfluramine. Uh, many of you may recognize that as a product that was used many years ago in FenFen, which is a dietary uh, treatment was fenfluramine and fenteramine. Um, those, the use of that product was basically brought to a halt by the demonstration of valvular changes in the heart, uh, such the safety got called into question. Fenfluramine is being investigated now for the treatment of Dravet's. Recent uh, presentations at the American Epilepsy Society show significant efficacy, really impressive efficacy in the treatment of seizures. Uh, and so it's really kind of an exciting advance that certainly may be an important part of 
treating Dravets as we go forward. It's unclear where it may shake out. There will be some sort of safety monitoring, cardiac echoes or whatever, to look at cardiac health uh, when the product is used. Uh, but the numbers are really impressive and encouraging, so it's a, that's another product that we're looking at with some expectation for the treatment of Dravets and possibly other similarly affected individuals.